Welcome. I am so excited to be working with you. And I want to give you a little bird's eye view of the journey that you are embarking on today. So we are going to be working together to build a lifestyle for you where you will work out strategically and eat with purpose. So you look good, move well, and feel amazing. So let's dive into what that looks like. So there are four phases to becoming the energetic empowered expert in your body, right? We have learning, doing, pushing the limits, which is actually optional, and maintaining, right? And so maintaining is kind of what I imagine is like the promised land. That's what we're all striving for. This is where we want to end up and be able to live our life and really feel good and have our healthy lifestyle be easy, you know, and be able to have headspace to focus on all the other important things that are going on in our life and still feel good about our bodies, to feel at home in our bodies and feel like we are taking care of ourselves, okay? No one is born knowing all of this information. And that means everyone starts at the beginning, right? Everybody, <laughs> including us with this program. So first off, we're going to be learning. We're going to be in phase one. You're learning basic habits. You're learning exercise technique and building a fitness base. And you're mastering your macros. We'll get into all of this. The second phase is doing. So when we are focused on the doing, we're not learning anymore. Now we're developing and improving the consistency of your practice, of all the different skills and habits that we've already built. This is where we're able to adjust and pivot as needed based on the results that you are seeing or not seeing. And then this is also where we really focus a lot on developing your internal locus of control, right? And your ability to recognize what do you have control over? What can you change? And what do you not have control over? And what can you not change? All right. Now, some of us choose to then push the limits a little bit. It's exciting. We're seeing results. We feel highly motivated because of those results. And we really want to see what can I do here? Right. So that might involve going into more aggressive tracking to create a calorie deficit. That might mean that there's daily movement or daily exercise that you are participating in. Um, and you're going to be able to or need to maintain a high level of adherence to your plan for about eight weeks at a time. Right. Again, this is the pushing the limits thing. And it's later. It's optional. I don't want to overwhelm you. But I think you should understand that there are kind of different steps in different places to be. Now, when we go into maintaining and we're talking about this long term maintenance of a healthy lifestyle, it's very, very different from the pushing the limits side of things. Right. So that kind of tells us if we're always trying to be like on a diet, we're always trying to change our body or lose body fat. You're not supposed to live your life there. That's a short term process. We want to get our goal accomplished and then we want to move out of that phase and into the maintaining phase, right? So when we talk about maintaining, we're talking about transferring all of the knowledge and the skills that you've learned and gained throughout the previous three phases. And we're putting that into your everyday life, right? We're integrating it in a way that really works for you. This is where you would move away from tracking food or logging food and into a more intuitive style of eating. Um, and just using all of the food knowledge that you've learned and kind of leaning on that to guide how you fuel yourself, how you feed your body and your food environment that you surround yourself with. And then we're talking about lifestyle, right? A healthy lifestyle, which includes routine, physical activity, um, and mental health as well. Mental health being such a big part of it because our body image and our confidence in ourselves, and the amount that we demand of ourselves when it comes to our nutrition or when it comes to our workouts plays a really big role in the mental health side of things, right? So we want that relief of letting it be a little bit easier. So let's talk a little bit more about phase one, the learning side of things, because that's where we're going to be starting, all right? So we are learning to start at the beginning. We are learning basic habits. So you're going to be paying attention to what and how you eat. You are going to be recognizing your hunger and fullness and satiety cues that are coming from your body, right? And I want you to understand how calorie balance plays a role in body fat levels, 
Okay. These are kind of ways that we know, okay, we got through phase one. You need to be able to do those things. You also need to build a fitness base. So you're going to be learning exercise technique. You're going to be de developing the habit of moving your body three to five times a week and building a training routine that really works for you, right? Works for your lifestyle and your schedule. And then you're going to be mastering your macros. So you are going to know what protein is, veggies, fats, carbs. You're going to be able to identify those things and really have a strong foundation of knowledge and um, being able to put real foods to those kind of categories of foods to build healthy meals for yourself and fuel yourself in a way that feels good, works for you, and helps you to really feel your best. So if we talk about phase one um, and being the learning phase, really, this is about starting at the beginning, right? It's very, very common. We get excited about doing something. We want to make a change and we go from zero to 60 in five seconds. And then we go from 60 to meltdown in 10 more seconds, right? So it's like we're like, boom, shooting up that effort. And then, bam, we slam, crash it down because we can't keep up with what we've tried to do. So we are very commonly willing to commit an excess amount of time and energy to things when things are new, right? When we're trying to, to do something new, it's very likely that we're going to overcommit ourselves, right? And, and say, oh, I can do this, no problem. I'm going to work out six days a week. I'm going to eat this and this and this. I'm not having this food. I'm not having this food. And that takes up so much effort. And for the first week or two, we're usually willing to give it that effort. But then inevitably, it's not sustainable and we're not willing to keep up with it. Right. And so we set up these expectations um, for our our own standards and for the speed of our progress that are way too high. And that leads to getting burnout. And then when we have this this experience over and over again, which is so common, we start to believe that we can't do it at all. Right. And we start to kind of give up on ourselves. And sometimes we give up on even trying at all anymore. We think, oh, this just doesn't work for me right? But it can work for you. It will work for you. You just need to start at the beginning, right? We're being too impatient. We have to keep our expectations realistic. And I need you to meet yourself where you're at. You can't start way down the line. You got to start with phase one, right? This is where we really set ourselves up for success. So let's talk about habit-based coaching because that is what you and I are gonna be doing to help to set up healthy habits for you so that you have these to lean on for the rest of your life, right? Habits are really how we live our lives. Our entire lives are made up of habits. Essentially, our brain loves to put as many decisions as possible on autopilot and delegate those things so that it can use its energy to focus on things that can't be delegated and can't be automated. Um, and this has been proven by science over and over and over again. Right. And our current environment uh, really makes it so that poor health is the norm. Right. Poor health is really the most common state of being at this point, which is so sad. Right. The fact is high energy levels, mental strength, muscle definition. These things require a level of excellence. It doesn't happen by accident. Right. It requires some intention. It requires some effort. But the way that we create that excellence is by adopting habits that you can rely on that will do most of the really hard work for you, right? So that you're not just leaning on willpower all the time forever because that never ends well, right? We are always going to face hard days. We're always going to have some hard days where the kids are freaking out, work got crazy, there's no food in the fridge, you're exhausted, what do we do? right? And the fact is that those are the days where you need your healthy habits more than any other time. Healthy habits are great on the easy days, right? It feels good. But you need them on the hard days because otherwise it's the first thing to go, right? When things get crazy, the first domino to fall is feeding ourselves well, getting our workout in, taking care of ourselves. That's just how it tends to go, right? This is how we operate. So habits are really like the secret sauce, right? Because since our brain loves them so much and wants to go on autopilot, if we can give you healthy habits to use as your autopilot, you're going to have them to lean on whenever you need them there, right? And you can think about lots of different habits that are already popping up in your life, right? My guess is you wake up in the morning and you immediately go to the bathroom. You probably afterwards have a cup of coffee. 
you never think to consider, do I actually want this coffee? It's just the next thing that you do in your routine, right? You get home from work at night and maybe the kids are in bed and you pour yourself a glass of wine, right? And you didn't necessarily think about, do I really want this wine? It's just part of what happens next. So many things are just what happens next. So we're going to intervene and bring back some awareness to that autopilot. And we're going to start to replace those with things that happen next being things that are aligned with your goals and the things that you want for yourself. All right. And this is why I focus on habit based coaching, because if we can give you positive habits, then success is inevitable. You will get there. Right. Healthy habits mean that you're not creating an unrealistic expectation for yourself and that it's not about a diet or a body type or like a weight on the scale. It's about creating an automatic automatic lifestyle of health. All right. Um, and you'll use those habits long term to create the changes that you want so that you can lose fat, you can feel energized, and you can feel aligned with your body and at home in your body. So each week, we will be adding a habit to focus on together, and I'm going to be guiding you through this, so that you can practice the next step in this journey. right? And so one habit a week doesn't sound like much. In the beginning, it's going to feel pretty easy right? Or like too simple. And the fact is that if we change just one habit a week for the next 12 weeks, you will be a totally different woman three months from now. That's how this works, right? This is a lot of change when you start to layer these things together. So while you practice these habits, you're going to get information from me on how to make it easier, different pitfalls to avoid, all kinds of different stuff. And I'm here to help tackle any speed bumps any challenges that you face along the way so we can personalize it for you and make sure it's working for you and your lifestyle, right? These healthy habits give us something to fall back on. The overarching goal of habit-based coaching is to change your response to the hard days, right? It's to help you so that these healthy habits can anchor you and they make a healthy lifestyle automatic no matter if things are easy or things are tough, right? The, the healthy habits are like your parachute when things get stressful. So this is a quote uh, by Will Durant it says, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. And so I want to remind you that you don't have confidence in things that you haven't done before, right? Nobody walks up to, you know, the, the I don't even know what, where do we, what do we start? Nobody walks onto the soccer field and instantly knows like, I'm going to go score this goal and I'm going to be awesome, right? Like it's not how it works. If you've never been on a soccer field before, you're not going to feel that way, right? It takes practice. It takes time to get good at things, right? And if you've tried to change your body before, or you've tried to start working out and stick with it, or you've tried to start eating healthy and take better care of yourself, and you've failed to be able to do that, you might have some doubt about your own ability to succeed right now. And that is totally normal, right? And this is part of why it's so important that we start at the beginning and we start where things seem a little too easy so that they build to feel easier as we go. And as things get harder, it will feel a little bit easier. It'll feel more accessible and more attainable for you, right? And so you don't have to be excellent. You don't have to to hold yourself to a standard of perfection, the way that we are excellent and, and we hold the standard of excellence for ourselves is by just trying to be a little bit better, right? It's trying to show up for ourselves as much as we can, just in the best way that we know how. So let's talk more about phase one. And we're going to start with these basic habits. So first, you're going to start to learn how to be more aware of what's going on in your body. You're going to be paying attention to how you eat, and that will bring awareness to your eating habits, right, overall. I want you to be able to identify areas that can be changed or adjusted. You can work on this together. And then how and when you eat is going to be just as important as what you eat. So right now, we're not going to be starting out focusing on what you eat. We're going to be starting out on when you eat and how you eat it, right? And some of this awareness, are you super full? Are you still hungry? What's going on in your body? Because all of these body cues, your hunger, your cravings, energy levels, these are all messages that our body are sending us about our hormones. So it's important that we know what's going on, right? Because we want to be able to listen so that we can make the right choices. So you're going to learn how to recognize these hunger, fullness, and satiety cues from your body, and we're going to tap into these messages. 
And then you're also going to be learning about calorie balance, basic calorie balance and, and knowing roughly how much to eat is very important for long term sustainable health. Right. That skill level and knowing how much you need roughly will do wonders for being able to feel really good in your body for the rest of your life. OK, so calorie balance is about understanding how it plays a role in our body fat levels, in our body composition and learning to create a calorie deficit in a sustainable and healthy way if the goal is to lose weight or lose body fat. Um, and so what this turns into is really a discussion about balancing your calorie budget rather than restricting foods and taking away food groups or slashing calories and eating way, way, way too little for your activity levels um, and for a healthy adult woman. So this is about balancing your calorie budget, and we're going to work on learning how to do that as well. You will also be learning about um, your fitness base. Basically, we want to set you up to have a really strong place to operate from as you continue to get stronger, as you continue to do more when it comes to movement and training. So first you're gonna be learning about exercise technique, right? And our body learns with practice, right? Repetitions, it's literally called reps in the gym. Repetition is how we learn and it's how we get better and stronger. So repeating movements is really key here. We're gonna start out with that and you're gonna get, you're gonna see a lot of the same stuff right in the beginning so that you can really learn it. From here, it's important to remember that training is a lifelong thing, right? There's never going to be a time where it's like, oh, I never have to work out again. That's cool. I'm done now. That's just part of being a healthy human being is moving your body and, and having physical activity. So if this is a lifelong process, it is worth it to take a few weeks to set you up for success, to learn your exercise technique, to let yourself start at the beginning and move forward from there. Right. Learning the foundations will open us up to lots of other variations and different types of exercise. And if you know how to do it well and do the basics really well, then you can do the sexy stuff later. All right. Because that repeating movements is so important, we want to create a habit of movement in your life. So working out consistently is one of the biggest challenges that my clients face, right? It's tough to make that happen. And there's no way around it. Training is a necessity. It's got to happen. If you want to be healthy for the rest of your life, this is a huge part of that. So the goal is to consistently move your body three to five times per week. If we can get you to three times a week consistently over the next six weeks, you're in a great place. That seems really doable to me. I hope it seems doable to you. All right. And the other most important part about your fitness base is personalizing it, right? Your lifestyle is going to dictate when, where, and how often you can train. And the goal is to really find a regular routine that you can stick with long term, because, again, that's what we're really after here. Um, and consistency is always more important than intensity. So if you can give me 80 percent effort three times a week, that will that will carry you so much farther than 100 percent effort where you just go in and like totally bust your butt one time a week. Right. Three times a week. So much better. That's what we're aiming for. So we're moving in that direction. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to kill yourself. You just have to show up. All right. Let's next talk about personal training versus remote training. So if you've ever had a personal trainer before, you'll recognize that part of what uh, the draw is in personal training is you set up an appointment with someone else. And so because you set up an appointment with someone else, you're more likely to show up. And you're not going to, you know, you know, throw it, throw it in the, in the, that was a good idea category and move on to the next thing in your day. Now, I would say that since there are so many of us that are willing to hold an appointment with someone else and are not willing to hold an appointment that we make with ourselves, that's something to think about a little bit and consider why that might be happening. All right. But I digress. Um, when you're doing personal training and you have a trainer there next to you, you're also going to be getting in the moment feedback on technique. They might be telling you, hey, change this, tweak that, whatever, right? And someone is selecting your weights for you. They're going to tell you how to progress. Okay, this is what we're doing next. I want you to make it harder by doing X, Y, Z, right? This is all different from remote training. Remote training is what you're going to be doing with me. And you will have scheduled workouts to complete on your own time, which means you're going to have to show up for that appointment because you made an appointment with yourself, 
Now, in the long run, this is actually really good. This is what we want, right? Because that's the only way that you're going to be able to stick with this long term. I will know if you do the workouts, you do have to check in and I do see the results and see videos. So there is still some accountability there. I'm just not able to be there with you in that moment to make you sure you do it right at this certain time. Okay. And to get feedback on your technique, you're going to need to send me videos. So if there's an exercise that you don't understand, or there's an exercise you want some feedback on, or just something new that you want to make sure you're doing well, you just take a video, send it on over to me. I'm happy to give you feedback. Super simple. Um, it works really surprisingly so well. It's great. Um, and then you are going to learn how to progress yourself. You're going to learn how do I know if I should add more weight to my movement? How do I know how many reps I should be doing or how many sets I should be doing? How do I make this harder and make sure that I'm not hitting a plateau? You're going to learn all of these things in our work together. And a big part of that is because of the autonomy that you're going to have and the personal responsibility you're going to have in your own workouts and in your training. All right, and now I'm gonna get back to uh, one more big part of our phase one outcome and how we know, okay, I did phase one, I was successful. For you to be successful here, you are going to be able to identify the main macro in foods. So you're determining the main macro that you ate, whether that's protein, carbs, fats, veggies, and you're able to build a plate with that. You're gonna be able to identify a portion size of each macro. So you're building your meals and you're able to say, okay, this is one portion of protein. This is one portion of carbs. Being able to identify how much of the, each of those macros you actually need. You're gonna be able to uh, track those portions per day. So, okay, you know how many portions you had at this meal. How many did you have for the day, right? You need to be able to do that so that we can figure out, okay, are we hitting kind of our daily targets of how much food we need in order to move towards our goals? And then the last part of that is going to be your ability to track the portions for the week. So when we look at Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right, we look at the different days of the week and we see what your portions are. How consistent are we? Are we kind of staying within range? Are we hitting our targets as best we can? Again, we're going to work up to this. This is not something I expect you to do week one, but this is where we're going. And these are the skills that you need to be able to build so that you can continue to move forward later into phase two. Okay. So that is it for phase one. It's all centered around learning and practicing new habits. There will be discouraging moments. There will be times when you are not quite nailing it and you don't feel super great about what's going on. And that's okay. That's totally normal. Remember to start at the beginning with that beginner's mindset. We just want to learn. We don't have to be perfect. Um, and you, you don't have to expect to be perfect ever. So it's important to understand like you don't need to be perfect now, but you also don't need to be perfect later. And that being flexible is really important for this idea of long-term health, right? We want to be able to work with our lifestyle and make the best choice that we can in the context that we are in in the moment, right? And whatever the circumstances may be. So understanding all of these different skills is going to help us bridge into phase two. But for now, that's what we're focused on. That's what we're going to be working on over the next four to six weeks. And I hope this helps to give you a little blueprint of what to expect.